It's the Woody Show. The Woody Show. All right, so we have an in-studio guest, which is something that we don't do very often, as you guys know, if you listen to The Woody Show. Very rare. Uh, we don't do a lot of guests at all, but we're very excited to have this guest in studio today. Uh, I'm a big fan going all the way back to 1997. Yeah, mm-hmm. big, please long welcome way back to the Woody Show studio, Jeremy Piven. All right, yay, yeah. hey, Jeremy! Thank you, thank you so much for having you. me, you guys. Nice. I appreciate it. Now, uh, 1997, I remember yeah. seeing a movie where you played a uh, like a Hollywood tour bus oh my driver. God. Yeah, and I don't know what it was. <laughs> like you know, it wasn't like a big blockbuster film. It was called um, Just Right. Just Right. Yeah, and uh, so. He was helping, his character was to help okay. his dad who owned the tour bus company. Okay. But he was like crushing on this girl who was like this up and coming like Hollywood actress type. Sherilyn yeah. Fenn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And so, oh, from and, Twin Peaks. Yes. And, and yeah. so he, uh, his character was to pretend that he was a screenwriter to, you know, the dad's like, no, you got to lower your standards yeah, yeah. and this girl's never going to go for it. I don't know what it was. I remember watching the movie on that little TV inside the uh, the room in my grandfather's house where oh, I was living at the time. Okay, yeah. sure. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know what it was about that movie, but I you know I loved it. Thank you, man. That that was a sweet little movie. And the eleven people that, un- that yeah. have I'm seen one it, of them. <laughs> yeah, we we I'm will, one of them. We will. Yeah, you're one of them. So but we you know, got ten funny. more. We got ten yeah. more people out there, and we'll have a reunion, <laughs> yeah. and we'll sit down with nice. Sharon. It'll yeah. be amazing. Nice. No, I love that you that you're bringing that up. You you were one of a handful of people that have seen it and. That's kind of been my journey, which is interesting. It's like before I did Entourage, I had done 40 movies, you know, and I had, yeah. you know, I was, I was an old man that had, that had logged the hours and, um, you know, like this is going to sound very pretentious, but like Shakespeare says, the readiness is all. So by the time I even got to Entourage, I had, you know, been on, done so much stuff, you know, yeah. I've been on stage since I was eight years old and, you know, for mm-hmm. good or ill, I never stopped working. And people actually ask me. Well, that's me, the goal, right? I yeah. Mean, yeah. It is the goal. Yes, it is the goal. And yet, until you can stop on your own terms. Yes. Yes. But what? why on your own terms? Is it because you don't have enough balance in your life and you need to be more of an evolved human being? Ah, uh, no, forget about that. Uh, what about... Uh, <laughs> we're getting no, deep. No, wow. yeah. no. <laughs> no yeah. but uh, I mean, we're getting very deep here and I apologize mm-hmm. for this, uh, you know, aggressive TED talk right now. But, um, you know, I, for me... It's funny because people say to me, you know, why are you still single? You know, I'm 200 years old. It's not cute anymore. And Mm -hmm. I, and I'm honest with them. I say that, you know, I've been married to my work, like we're talking about. Yeah. And then, you know, my work decided to see other people. Um, And, (laughs) you know, and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's true that you have to be incredibly ambitious, especially in this town. um, And yet figure out a way to have balance. And, uh, and that's the trick, you know, because I would go from from one movie to the next, one, yeah. one TV show to the next. And being a stage actor from Chicago, I just thought, if there is work, I will do it. The idea of turning down work is, is sacrilegious, and so I just never did it. Yeah, but what's the mm-hmm. reason for that? Not to get all you well, know, no, psychological I probably, about it. I like, mean, are you... Yeah. I probably have a huge hole in my soul. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah that's probably and, it. And I'm viciously yeah. insecure, and I need to fill it, and I'll never fill it. Um, I don't know. That's a much longer conversation. Yeah, you know, I, I'm sorry to to you. No, I'm a workaholic. No. Like I, yeah. that's all I concentrate. I mean, I am married mm-hmm. and I have kids. There you go. Two mistakes. Three mistakes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's it's always the guys that are evolved that have families that are self deprecating <laughs> like that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And the grass is always greener. And you you know you. No, yeah, of I get it. No, like you hear mm-hmm. about like Derek Jeter, right? Like Derek Jeter didn't settle down and get mm-hmm. married until after until he was done playing baseball. Like, and you're like, you know what? That guy did it right. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you're just not ready to get married. You're, like you said, married to your work. There's something, and you know what? You're Jeremy Piven. You're very famous. Uh, women find you attractive. In fact, my wife would like to sleep with you. Right. She yeah. was very disappointed you know, that uh, it, that is, she wasn't able to come is, down here is today. Jeremy and offer on her herself. list. Yes. <laughs> oh really? Oh yeah, it, absolutely. It, it, would you it, like her phone number? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you would like her. Okay. Yeah. It just got really weird. I'm, I mean, <laughs> no, no, I'm, not, I'm not offering her up. This is no. not one of those like Hulk Hogan situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A proposal. <laughs> yeah, it's not a Hulk yeah. Hogan oh, thing. Why would you take a run in her, brother? Have fun. I'm sorry. That might not be right for me, sir. Take a run in her, brother. I'll take off the. Boots. Yeah, I don't get and how I'll guys watch. do that. Some people are in bed. Not me. Not me. <laughs> it's all fantasy. That's why I didn't let her no, down you know here. Because it become reality. You know what's interesting? Mm-hmm. It's like you say you're 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 Jeremy Piven, and, and I it's and I mean this. It's it's interesting because uh, I I don't have that reference, and I don't walk around thinking that anyone 
I, I don't assume that anyone knows my work. That, I think that would be incredibly unhealthy to walk around. Oh, and just assume? Yeah, yeah just be weird like that. So, Are you one of those guys, though, that say that you don't watch your own stuff? Like, you, there's actors and actresses say, oh, I, I spent months filming this right. movie, and I've never mm. seen it. I've never watched. You know, I, I, like Julia Roberts saying that she's never watched Pretty Woman. That's not a, I don't a true it. story, but like something like that. How have you not? You know, for me, uh, I, I love, I'm one of those guys that even, I like to watch playback after a take, not, because I'm, I, I'm, I just love watching myself. I'm just trying to figure out what works, what doesn't, and I'm not trying to repeat what works. Uh, I'm trying to see, okay, well, that didn't work. Stay away from that. This is what I thought I was doing. I'm looking at the frame going, well, that's not evident. So let me try to fix it so I can look at something and fix it. So if I can see something that I did, I can watch it and go, oh, okay, I can learn from this. So I, I try to watch stuff. I really do. You know, and remember in the beginning, it was kind of like... I would. Yeah, yeah I, I would. watch everything. <laughs> I would, yeah. and I would hate it. I'd watch oh, my yeah. bank yeah. account. Like, it's not that you yeah. like yeah. watching watch yourself. Your bank account. Some yeah. people would hate <laughs> watching themselves. No, I'd, I'd be yeah. watching everything. <laughs> well, you know, in the beginning, yeah. you kind of have this moment, where, you know, that come to Jesus moment where it's like, oh my God, that's what I look like. Because, it, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Because there's had nothing... It. You're yeah. like, oh yeah. man, I, I really had a different idea of the way I look. And that's real. Okay, well, let's just... Let's get your ego out of the equation. That's uh -huh. what you look like. That's what you sound like. Yeah. Um, and let's let's move on from there, which is very it's very humbling, and you just you kind of just do that. So Jeremy uh, Jeremy Piven is here, uh, not here to talk about like you know acting and you know philosophy and things like that. Really, he's here because now you're going around the country doing stand up comedy, and this is a yeah. new thing. And I was surprised when I heard that you were doing stand up comedy because I was like, huh, I saw you more, and I knew your background uh, from Second City and you know, theater and of course entourage and movies, you know, like just right. Yeah. <laughs> which everybody's seen. Right. Yes. Larry but, Sanders um, show, one of my all time favorite shows. There you yeah. go. I love so, that show see, so much. See, is there this, you is go. this just a new project for you or just a new interest, something you've always been interested in? Like why stand up comedy? I, I've always been interested in it and, you know, here and there I've been asked to host and MC things and I have friends who are comics and I've been I've been just in all of the form for my whole life. And I, I grew up watching Richard Pryor and, yeah. and all the greats mm -hmm. and um, being mesmerized by them. And, you know, I've always been on stage doing comedy in groups. And yes, I was writing on my feet, doing sketch comedy and improv and all that stuff. But it's different when you have a group to rely on. Um, and so this is the final frontier for me in terms of this is the one form I haven't done. And it, you know, it's incredibly scary because you, you know, you're not theorizing, you're not, um, you know, going back and getting the data and, and testing it and seeing, you know, the numbers and blah, blah. It's right there in real time. You're yeah. either crushing or you're not. The Woody Show. Uh, Jeremy Piven is here. Do we know who uh, went and got his coffee? I think who maybe Seabass did. Oh, Seabass yeah, did? He right, out. Then it's probably yeah. right. I don't know Hopefully. if he said like if it was if it was Randy or Tyler. Oh, it would, would be wrong. Uh -oh. Yeah, I would say was like it check. Not Randy or Tyler. I've never it? even Who heard of this drink. Who was it? Yeah. No, it was Tyler. We could oh, even go God. across the street to Whole Foods. Right. Oh, okay. yeah. Good luck, my Jeremy. Friend. Try it first <laughs> to make sure it's the right thing. No, I I'm mean not saying there's anything wrong. The other it might be wrong. No, I don't. <laughs> I I don't know Seabass, but I celebrate yeah. him with the power of Christ, nice. and I'm Jewish. That's how much. That's how much I celebrate Seabass. That's a great honor, sir. Yeah. What I've never heard of this oat, oat milk. milk. Oat what milk. the hell is it's oat, an oat milk. milk latte? You know what? All, all I know that is, sounds very Hollywood. It you does. know, you know what, buddy? It, it, yeah. I, I, you know what? I guess it is. Yeah, I guess it it, really it is, is. But I'll tell you this: you go much. to Madison, Wisconsin. They have an oat milk latte for you. No, nah. they, no, they don't. That's they don't have it in LA. Des Moines. They do yeah. have it here. But here, <laughs> yeah. all I know is this: you know, I was always like a like an almond milk latte guy, right? Yeah. And then I tasted the oat milk. Sounds like I work for oat milk, by the way. It really I, does. I have no skin yeah. in this game, you like guys. You have an oat milk yeah. agenda. I don't have an oat milk. I have no agenda. Um, <laughs> but I will say this: it's the the texture of it is incredible, and it's flying off like literally. Like you'll go to places, they're like, "I'm sorry, man, we're out of oat milk." Like oh, it, wow. oat milk really? is killing the. I don't know if they have a good PR person. So you can get but, milk uh, from oats. whoever's representing oat uh, oat milk. I want I, I need their I their representation. I mean, I've seen yeah. oats. Where are the udders? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm trying yeah. out my comment. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen an oat boob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 come on. Where's the oat jugs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. oat jugs. <laughs> yeah, the, the, <laughs> hey, I've never seen an oat lactating, bro. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? Is that a bill? Jeremy Piven is here. Of course, you know him from. 
from uh, Entourage. He's been in a ton of movies. How many movies do you say? Like uh, 70? 70 movies. Eight, eight, That's can, pretty cool. Can I geek out on one of them? Yeah. And I wonder if you could figure out which one I'm talking about just by the description. You know when you see a movie and you get a visceral experience, there's a movie you did, dark comedy. I loved Very you Very bad it. things. Ha! That's it. Wow. He was in it, Greg. That must be the I know, but Dude. he's been in a million movies. Really because, bro, let me comedy? tell you something. That I is watch the greatest <laughs> damn movie I watch of the, all time. I watch yeah. my reel, and <laughs> I sit alone in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Just watching my no, I don't. No, that, it's like you be, read mine. God, dude. that's such a good movie. You know, yeah. it's interesting because that movie, you know, it was it was Cameron Diaz and John Favreau yep. and and Christian, Christian Slater, Slater and myself, and it was this incredibly dark movie that so dark. that I was I was so proud of. It was so twisted, and people that see it can't believe it. Um, and there's so many different variables as to why certain movies blow up and certain don't. And you just got to put it out there to the universe that like you know. If, if the timing is off on a release, the studio was literally going under when yeah. they released it. And they released the darkest movie I've ever made on Thanksgiving Day, oh. which is like, yeah, let's sit around and, <laughs> yeah. what a great and, idea. and, and watch um, Piven in a bathroom yeah. kill a hooker by accident right. like, as we celebrate and then our dispose family. of her. Yeah. Right. It's very, very so twisted. So good. And then I also have to geek out that you inadvertently kind of saved my life. I didn't know what mercury poisoning was until oh. you were in the news. I would have gotten it had it not been for you. Well, I got to tell you, you know, what's so interesting is, you know, uh, people, oh, people, okay. people I know the story. People, okay. they, they, oh, they that's look, right. That was you. That, that was me. Okay. And it sounds like a fish tail. Good night, everyone. Yeah, Thank you for coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, hold on. You're the guest. I'm going to give you a choice. You have your choice yeah. of a getting. Would you like okay. Green Acres getting? There's Adam's family getting. <laughs> you can go with a Batman getting. You know, superheroes are big now. Okay. Uh, how about Queen getting? Or let's uh, offer up the Beethoven getting. Ooh. I like Queen. That's Queen. Yeah. All right, All here right. we go. This is for your joke. Get it, get it, get it. Mm. Get it, it's about fish. Get it, yeah. it's about fish. It's a fish tail. <laughs> I love it. So the it. story was you ended up sick because of too much sushi, too much sushi mercury right? poisoning. No, you know what it was? I, 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 I ended up not doing the show because I got a rash from the leather in my Lamborghini. No. That's what they would love to print. Yeah. No. Here, here's the reality that, that happened is that for, for I'm such a dummy. For 20 years, I was a, a kind of a pescatarian, eating fish twice a day. Yeah. But, you know, the variable was, and I learned this much later on, it's, it's how you assimilate mercury uh, as opposed, I mean, listen, some, you know, you might be able to have fish two, three times a day, your entire life, nothing else, and you're okay. Me, I couldn't assimilate it. It was, it was, I ended up like literally in the hospital and they were like, man, we've got to chelate you. Jeez. We have to, we can't even chelate. That's crazy. We got to chelate you intravenously. Wow. Damn. And then I found out later, it's like, you know, um, and this is by the way, anyone listening to this is like, what in God's name has happened yeah. to our show? <laughs> no, really quickly, I'll tell you. It, um, and I do believe in homeopathic remedies because that's what ended up happening to me. They're like, look, it's all about gut health. And mm -hmm. I, you and, hear a lot about yeah. that. Now. Yeah, that's yeah, so my, I got a lot of gut. I should be super healthy. Well, uh, indeed. Or you've got some parasites because we all have parasites from yeah. processed foods and sushi and all these things. Yeah. And I went in, into this homeopathic doctor and they're like, my man, we got to clean you out. I clean myself out. And so now uh, I'm good. I'm good to go. And, you know, that took me down and it was, it was, it was brutal. And I was the butt of a lot of jokes for a long yeah. time. Yeah. Well, it and sounded it like, uh, it, it, at first it sounded like something like completely made up. Like you just mm -hmm. didn't want to go to do the play or yeah, whatever. whatever. The, uh, oh, yeah. Well, which yeah. is interesting. Cause I, but <laughs> all I am is a stage actor. Yeah. That's yeah. all I've done my entire life. So why wouldn't, why would I not want to do what I love to do? Yeah. And, and I'm honored to do so. Well, yeah. Who, who, what was the actor mm -hmm. that said he got, uh, throat herpes or whatever it was from uh, oh, Michael Douglas from you know having oral sex with women Michael Douglas yeah, yeah. now that's a cool story yeah like, if you can go around saying like you know right. yeah, dude, <laughs> I did it so much that, that I, I got HPV I got, oh it was an cancer. HPV okay yeah right but was it actually cancer? did have cancer oh yeah. okay well then cancer is not funny that's not funny but... no not at all not, and, not and even he, remote and, <laughs> and he's he's crushing that on that <laughs> that new show with Alan Arkin. Right. You know, yeah. yeah. That's supposed to be amazing, which I really, really want to see. Yeah. The cool thing I think about comedy, going back to the stand up comedy yeah. thing, is that you can you could make jokes about cancer. You can make jokes about anything that you want because you're not yeah. working for anybody except for your audience. And so if the yeah. audience is showing up and they subscribe to right. your brand of comedy, no matter, no matter what it is, you don't have to worry about critics. You don't have to worry about social media. You don't have to worry about any of those people because they can do whatever you want. As long as you're filling the room 
or the arena or you know these guys are doing huge mm-hmm. huge uh venues but that's why i i, I think I that's rem- pretty cool that's so yeah. that's that's freedom man it, it yeah. is it is freedom and right now i think we need we need it more than ever yeah because it is probably arguably the last arena where you can embrace your freedom of speech yeah you know and people have tried people have tried to tear down comedians for jokes mm-hmm. they've made yeah it it, it doesn't you know, thank God, it doesn't seem to stick. You know, you've got guys yeah. like Chappelle that are doing it on the highest level that are really dedicated to, to, to speaking his truth yeah. and addressing things that are going on right now and t- giving you his honest take yeah. without being worried about how he's going to be viewed or seen. And, you know, we, we, We've always needed that as a yeah. you know as a people as a species as a culture. And it doesn't. We have, have to, to be, laugh at ourselves. We have to, otherwise we're in trouble. And it doesn't have to be for yeah. a purpose either. It could just be like, look, I think this is funny, yeah. and we're telling jokes to make people laugh. It could be that simple. It doesn't have to be like we're trying to make the world a better place, and know. I'm gonna you know we're gonna address this issue. It could just be funny. It, and it, but by the way, you know we don't need to go too deep into. But why is it funny? My God, that's true. I never thought of it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's insane. Thank you for that. Yeah. And then suddenly you see something from a different angle because we could sit here and all talk politics and be incredibly didactic and try to drive our points home. But if you're making it funny and interesting, it's going to land harder anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's what's. Yeah. That's I think what's like great. John Oliver does a great job. Yeah. Of oh, taking like yeah. serious things, right. yes. topics, issues, stories, mm-hmm. whatever it may be. On last week tonight on HBO, mm-hmm. um, you, you know about HBO, right? You have Indeed. It. You heard <laughs> of it, do they right? give Indeed. you HBO you for free for life? Yeah. Like yeah. if you've been on a big HBO uh, show, do they? You know. Would, you know what? I never thought about dude, that. You should ask. I'm you sure know what? I'm not one of those dudes. I'm such a dummy. <laughs> yeah. You know, there are people yeah. that are like, bro, I, I just you know yeah. bought one of your Let's Hug It Out shirts. I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't make any money off that, mm. bro. I just I'm drinking some of the Avion tequila from your yeah. show. Yeah. They, I was like, oh, I don't have any, any part in that. Yeah. I'm yeah. drinking oat milk. Yeah. I'm drinking oat. Yeah. Wait a minute. Oh no, I do make money off oat milk. Don't worry about that, bro. I'm making money as we speak. It's big oat milk. That's right. Big oat milk. Big oat milk. Conspiracy. <laughs> no, so I, I've never been, I've never been, you know, a businessman in that, in that way. Um, well, if you're going to do comedy, man, you got to, cause like yeah. you're yeah, almost, you're the CEO you of your own co- uh, corporation. You're, huh. you're, you have, you, you got to wear I've a lot learned, of masks, If man. I've learned one thing today, it's, yeah. it's how to sell out. Thank you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so that have, you failed yeah. in yeah. selling out. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's only one thing worse than, than selling out and that's trying to sell out and you just can't do it. Right. <laughs> oh, no. That's true. Uh, that's true. I was about way to, worse. Yeah. I was about to name 11 people, but you can't right. do that. No. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm having the time of my life doing stand up, man, because like, like I mentioned earlier, it, it's a chance, you know, people might have a reference for you and then they get to spend an hour with you and they go, oh, okay, wait a minute, this is who the guy is. Yeah. Yeah. And then I could slip into characters and, oh, there, you know, there's yeah. Ari Gold, we remember him or, or various things. Well, oh, we heard Stallone, we heard yeah. the Mike Tyson, give us, uh, give us one more. Well, you know, I, I, I run into Owen Wilson and I do, I do this bit about how, I, I don't know if you guys know this right now, but, but Waze has a new feature where you can get a celebrity to talk to oh, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, okay. and, and, and so that. now yeah. I've got yeah. Owen Wilson as Lightning McQueen in cars talking okay. Okay. Nice. You know, and all of a sudden you're driving, you're like, turn right, you chow. <laughs> you know, and oh my God, it's Owen. <laughs> yeah. You know, say, hey, it's a butterscotch cowboy. <laughs> oh my God. You know, I know you're on your way to do some, uh, some wonderful radio, but if you can turn the car around and take your shoes off and feel the earth. <laughs> you know, and, um, you know, cause he's just one of these guys where yeah. like every time you run into him, it's like. It's like a unicorn yeah. because he's just having the greatest life. Yeah. And you're just mm-hmm. like, wow, there's Owen, man. Out. And you don't Look really him. hear or see anything about no. him until he's like in a yeah. project or no, something. No, he's yeah, just, yeah, he's yeah. just yeah. in his pajamas yeah. somewhere, <laughs> like walking around, yeah. just living the dream. You're right. Yeah. You know, I you feel know? so rude. We've been talking to Jerry and Piven this whole time, mm-hmm. and he brought a guest with him yes. that we haven't even acknowledged. Menace has been over there hanging oh, out with the guest. I'm obsessed. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy brought his French bulldog. This mm-hmm. is Bubba. Bubba. I love Bubba. Yeah. How old is Bubba? Bubba's Bubba's two years old. And okay, and Bubba's the reason why he needed another coffee, by the way, because Bubba knocked the first oh, um, yeah. Bubba. oat milk latte <laughs> right mm-hmm. out of. Uh, Man, you are making mouth. me sound so bougie. <laughs> what? Were it's you a, driving with the dog on your lap, or was that I, how it happened? I was. I okay. was oh. indeed. Yeah. But see, here's the thing about Bubba: is he's with me twenty four seven. Yeah. Just because I I feel guilty like leaving him alone. I've literally had people come up to me like at the gym and go. Bro, what are you what are you doing? Yeah. Like, it's okay to leave your dog alone. Bubba goes like, to the gym. Yeah, nice. well, you can't tell he's been working out. 
Is, yeah. Is, Good night, yeah. everyone. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you go to the gym? Of course he does. No, I, I do. I, he's, you know, Bubba's, Bubba's with me 24 seven. And, um, yeah, he, I, I, I love this little guy. He's got his own, he's got his own Instagram. Oh, yeah. Just like Menace's Sweet. dogs. Yeah. That's yeah. why Menace got dogs. It. Yeah. If you guys oh, want to no. follow Bubba, he's at uh, Bubba the Bully. Oh, Bubba the Bubba Bully. The yeah. bully. On Instagram. And someone was like, hey, does he get free dog food? I'm like, there's another thing yeah. that I should be doing. <laughs> For real. I'm Jewish. I should be getting a lot more free stuff. <laughs> wow, so see, now that's offensive. Failure. I don't know if that's, that's offensive. Oh. Yeah, that's offensive. Okay. I don't know. Wow. Making the joke. No. Okay, but I am Jewish, so oh, yeah, he taking gets a, a shot of my own people. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're not going to get that kind of criticism in this house. Oh, no. This but is yeah, a safe not space. Not around here. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Piven, everybody, go see him. The stand-up, and I know you're taking this seriously because, dude, I think you've done every radio show across the country. <laughs> and it doesn't matter how big or small the city. I mean, uh, it's, it's funny. A buddy of mine hit me up and said, Dude, Jeremy Piven's coming. I'm like, get the hell out of here. No way. What's he doing there in the first place? Well, you know, you know what's so interesting that what I've noticed about this journey of from me being on the road is that um because I've been so underground with my comedy, you know, and I I've been filming this journey and and I would love to do a special um but people don't have sponsored a sponsored by oat milk. Exactly. Yeah, know, Obviously. In, indeed. Naturally. Yeah. Um so people don't necessarily have an immediate reference for me as a stand-up. And you know, people work really hard, and they may go, "Oh yeah, I've, you know, I've seen Jeremy, and I like him as an actor." I, I, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to pay to go see him do stand up. And so for me, you know, if you've got a very finite amount of hardcore comedy fans that don't have a reference for me when I go to these towns, they're not coming out. But the moment I come in and hang out, you know, with you guys mm -hmm. or get the word out, um, they go, "Oh yeah, okay, cool, yeah, I heard him on that, and yeah, I think he, yeah. I, th I think he can handle right. it." I, yeah. I, I, and then they all show up. So like, I'll show up at a venue, and they're like, "Yeah, we're a, we're at about ten percent occupancy." Mm -hmm. I'm like, "Interesting." And then I go and and do a little press, and we're like, "Oh no, we're good, we're clean, yeah, yeah. everyone clean," because they're like, "No, you know, people don't know I'm in town." And mm -hmm. then they go, "So I'm very lucky that I have this audience." You know, from yeah. from all these decades of because people will pay just to see you. Yeah, yeah, right? of course. Yeah, and and by the way, you, that's a very good point because they don't know. Wait a minute, is this a an a Q and A? This is a victory yeah. lap? Is he, <laughs> is he showing a a screening? What's what's right. happening? It's like no, this is stand up, man. And then afterwards, we hang out and take pictures. So yeah, if you want to hang out, let's do it. But also, it's my job to make you laugh. I had a one one more quick story. When I first started, I had a guy say to me, a club owner who I reached out to, I said, I'd love to play your place. I've always wanted to. And he said, sure. He goes, but are you okay disappointing the audience? And I was like, um. Uh, we got that same speech when we started. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's amazing. And I was like, you know what, man? Uh, I, I, that's, that's my nightmare. Why would I ever want to do that? Yeah, yeah. And he goes, well, it just, they're going to expect a certain level from you as an actor, they have a reference for you and then you're gonna be doing stand up and you're not gonna live up to their expectations. And I said, please, for me, come to the show. I'll beg you, man. Cause a lot of times these guys have seen it all. Yeah. Uh, they're yeah. great, but they, you know, or they'll even give you notes, but they haven't seen your set. Right, I was like, it. for me, please come see the set. And he did. And um, I just had an incredible time. I had a great set and, and I, I just kind of looked at him and we, we had this moment, you know, it was like really clear, like that to me, there's not, I, here's the deal. You're not going to believe this. And I don't care if you do, or you don't, but I've been the underdog my entire life. And I, I, I've had that, and that mentality every day of every set I've ever stepped onto mm -hmm. or every stage. It's a chip on my shoulder. I've never been right for any role. I've never been physically, you know, like, oh, this is the type. You don't know how old I am. You don't know. Is he the best friend? Is he a serpent mm -hmm. guy? Is he the mm -hmm. slumpy guy? Is he a powerful guy? Is he the good looking guy? The knock of whatever. Mm -hmm. We don't know. What's his, you know what I mean? So I've never been right. I've had to go and, and, you know, earn. I did 40 movies before I did Entourage. Right. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I was billed last on that show. Um, you know what I mean? Like they were like, it's a fringe player. I was already doing leads in shows, but they're like, you're a fringe player. It's a smaller role. And I was like, let me earn, let me yeah, earn. Even my though key. it's your show, everybody's yeah. waiting for Ari Gold to show yeah. up yeah. every time. Well, thank you. But, yeah. it, but when we start, sure. when we started, it's like, no, you know, you're a quote unquote, a fringe player. You're in the background doing your thing. I had one scene in the pilot, but it's my job to get in there and dig, you know, every, all these movies that you guys may have seen, I had one scene. And it's my job to come in over prepared. And I'm if there's any key to the success I've had, I'm very delusional. And like I'll play these <laughs> roles like they're the lead. Yeah. And I'll come prepare mm -hmm. with monologues and options and blah blah blah. Then they go, oh, wait a minute, we saw the dailies. Do you mind coming back in and doing this other scene? Sure. Yeah. Hey, do you mind doing this other scene? Then suddenly like 
then people think that like, oh man, I like that one role in this movie. And little did they know I had one line. Yeah. May oh, I wow. help you? It was made, you know, in, <laughs> yeah. in, in yeah. rush hour too. And I just wouldn't stop talking. So that's kind of the way life is that we're not going to be handed anything. We just got to grind as hard as we can. Worst, by the way, this is the worst TED Talk ever, and I apologize. <laughs> no, that's I right. love it. We do yeah. know that you're the oat milk guy. Yeah. We know that. That's yeah. the takeaway. <laughs> that's it. From this. Jerry Piven and Bubba, everybody. Oh, Yay! Bubba. Bubba the Frenchie. Bubba the boy. Yeah, Bubba that's the Bully sweet. on Instagram. Uh, Jeremy, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me, Good man. I appreciate everything. it. Keep grinding. Thank you, sir. Come out and see the show. Let's go Keep see, standing. Come, come see some comedy. Yeah. Can Jeremy Piven stand up? All right. <laughs> <laughs> 